In this video, what I want to do is show you how to evaluate a logarithmic expression when the bases are not the same. So on a problem like this, a lot of you might look at this and immediately just kind of give up. Like the bases are not the same. You can't apply the rules of logarithms or the properties of logarithms, right? And I think one of the first things we always do in class is like when we're giving you the notes, you know, as a teacher, like da 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 da. Here's all your notes. Like one thing I always like tell my students, like you can only apply the properties of logarithms when the bases are the same. You know, and that's especially when we're looking at the product and the, you know, quotient properties and stuff like that. You know, one thing I kind of recognize with this one, or at least when I'm looking at this, this isn't like the product. Like remember the product represents like two separate logarithms that are separated by addition, right? Then we multiply the arguments. Again, only when the bases are the same. Now, again, I have that red flag, like the bases are not the same, right? So I can't use my typical properties of logarithms. But the other thing that's interesting about this problem is I'm actually not adding the two logarithms, right? It's already multiplied. So I couldn't even use the product property of logarithms anyways in this case, like I'm already kind of stuck. So one of the one of the properties though that I think a lot of times gets overlooked and I am victim of this as a teacher as well. It's like one of the last problems we talk about and, and it's usually one of those properties we just kind of relate to students. I'm like, oh yeah, if like you don't have a calculator, you can use it. But a lot of times we don't investigate problems where it is required to be able to use and that is going to be the change of base formula. So we recognize there's really not much I can do here. But one thing I can do is use the change of base formula. Now, when I personally like to use the change of base formula, I always like to use logarithms. And again, just a quick reminder, the change of base formula just looks like this. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is if I have a logarithm with the base A of B, I can just rewrite this as the logarithm of the argument, in this case B, divided by the logarithm of the argument from the original base. Now, I'm using the natural logarithms, but a lot of times, you know, you can use base 10, or in reality, you can use any base that you want to. It doesn't really matter. I always like to use logarithms. I don't know why, it's just, it's kind of been my habit. So, let's go and use the change base formula. Let's see in this problem if that's going to help us, like, I don't know, simplify this at all. So what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and apply change of base form for both of them. And remember, I gotta keep this multiplication here. Okay, so now hopefully you recognize that, ah, something interesting is happening. Like as I'm multiplying these, or at least everything is separated by multiplication, I notice that I have the same expression, ln of six, and ln of six in the numerator as well as in the denominator. So now I can use my division property and divide those out. That's now gonna leave me with a ln of eight over ln of two. Now, in this case, you still might be stuck. And you might be saying like, well, I don't know what to do from here. <laughs> like, still kind of suck. Like, what do you do? So one thing that you could do is look at the arguments and recognize that there's a relationship between an eight and a two, right? And that relationship here is that eight can be rewritten as a two cubed. Now, why would I want to go ahead and do that? And you might say, well, I don't know. But again, I see that relationship. So a lot of times in mathematics, when we're trying to solve or trying to do something, we get stuck. You know, like you might have thought about, you might not have thought about the change of base formula here. But like one thing I would, I would you know, advise you to start looking at is like, think about like, well, maybe it's not the right way. Maybe it's not, but like try things, right? And be okay if you're getting it wrong. Like it's all a part that, you know, discovery and trying to see like, you know, can I use this? You know, as long as you're not violating any mathematical laws, like feel free to try things and see if they work. Sometimes you might have found out a better way than what your teacher was teaching you, right? Or at least a way that makes more sense to you than what maybe your teacher was um, teaching it. And I know as a teacher, I've found that many, many times, like I might explain something and the student's like, why didn't you do it this way? It's much easier. And I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> that was a much better way. Um, you know, it's just the way that I saw the problem and, you know, through my experience, but you know, that might not be the best or the easiest for any of you. If we go ahead and rewrite this, then what I'll have now is a LN, of two cubed all over at ln of two. So now what this reckon, what this triggers to me is the product property. And remember the product property of a logarithm basically states if you have like, if you have a logarithm base a of b raised to the c power, I can take the c out in front. Now I can just rewrite this as c times the logarithm of base a of b. So I can take this three, I now have a three times ln of two divided by ln of two. Well, those are gonna divide out, leave me with a final answer ladies and gentlemen, of just a three. Now you know how to use the change of base formula. In the next video, we're gonna expand them on this. I'm using the change of base formula as a power. I'll see you there.